The St. Lucia Social Development Fund presents Sons and Daughters of St. Lucia, The Land, The People. Today's program highlights Sir Stanislas James's growth and his contribution to St. Lucia. On November 13, 1919, in the town of Sufra, a boy child is born to Raymond and Teresa James. He is the third of nine children, Stanislas Anthony James. One of the biggest projects to coincide with this boy's birth was spearheaded by the Roman Catholic Church. Over time, with a growing Catholic population, the church in Sufre had become too small and Father Vie was going to build it. He had begun a major fundraising drive, his intention to rebuild the church to better meet the needs of the people. His dream did not materialize during his tenure. Work was finally authorized in 1951 after much negotiation and sale of church property. By then the fund stood at £5,000 or $24,000. Meanwhile, the rest of the country was moving forward socially, economically, politically and adult suffrage was imminent. Stanislas James, now 32, had long left Sufre and was already appointed the first supervisory teacher on the island. By then he had contributed significantly to St. Lucia's development in a number of ways. He had already become the first St. Lucian to obtain a diploma in education. He was trained for and became the social welfare and probation officer. After the historic 1948 fire that destroyed most of the town of Castries, Mr. Stanislas James led the relief effort. During that time, he was appointed head of the Public Relations and Social Welfare Department, transmitting the island's first news broadcast. He later established a boys' training center at Massad Grusely. It was through his efforts that volleyball was introduced to the island. During his active public service years, Mr. James served as permanent secretary of three different ministries, the Ministry of Housing, Community Development, Social Affairs and Labor, the Ministry of Education and Health, as well as the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Agriculture and Tourism. He has made significant contributions in so many ways. He helped to form the NIS, the National Insurance Scheme. He founded the St. Lucia Schools for the Deaf and Blind, the National Council for the Disabled, and was instrumental in coordinating the work of the Peace Corps in St. Lucia. He dedicated over 40 years of his life to the Red Cross. He designed the framework for disaster preparedness and drafted the island's first comprehensive national disaster plan. He also served as National Coordinator for Disaster Preparedness. Clearly a man who understood the kind of work involved in building a country literally from the ground up. He assisted in government and impacted on people's lives in a very hands-on way. He was at the vanguard of social welfare and community development projects and programs. He was instrumental in establishing youth clubs, sports and community centers and playing fields island-wide. In 1992, he received his knighthood. At 73 years of age and with a successful career behind him, so Stanislaus was appointed Governor General. He served in this post until his retirement in 1996, after dedicating 57 years of service to country. In 2011, this faithful son, a member of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire and Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, passed away. Join us next time for another in the series of Sons and Daughters of St. Lucia, a program designed to highlight the various aspects of the lives of people who assisted in the development of our island, St. Lucia.